Hey everyone, Brian Zane here to give you my predictions for this weekend's big Wrestle Dream pay-per-view happening Sunday in Seattle from AEW. There is a lot of hype going into this show, the first edition of Wrestle Dream in their history, and uh, not just in the matches themselves, but there of course is also that hype, the, the, the tease that an era will end and a new chapter will begin in professional wrestling and all this, and what does it mean, and so much speculation about that. I know that uh, uh, the, the persistent rumor is that Tony Khan has bought New Japan Pro Wrestling, but it seems like he, he himself has ruled that out, but is not really kind to offer any other explanations based on what I've read. And I'm, you know, I don't, uh, there's so much potential to what that could mean. Like, is this like a shoot thing? Is this like a storyline? Would it have to do with streaming or ROH or a great number of options and possibilities for that? But it does have people talking and I guess, you know, that's half the battle right there. So a lot of eyes are going to be on this show, including uh, yours truly. Uh, I'm not just talking about watching it at home. I'm going to be in Seattle on Sunday uh, with a group of friends. We decided to go Go up and uh, watch the show on Sunday night. So really excited to go to this one. It's the first live AEW pay-per-view that I've attended since Double or Nothing 2019. And uh, hey, if anyone's going to be there in Seattle uh, for the show, if you see me, uh, feel free to say hi. I know I've gotten so many comments over the years from people saying, "Oh, I saw you in the crowd at this thing," or "I saw you at the convention," or whatever. I didn't get, I didn't uh, want to disturb you or interrupt what you were doing by saying hi. Please say hello to me. I, I appreciate fans reaching out to me in public. It's, it's very nice and I, I, I consider myself a pretty welcoming guy. So if you do catch me there at Climate Pledge Arena, by all means, say hello. Let's break down the card here. You got Ricky Starks versus Wheeler Yuta. This comes after Starks had lost two in a row to Brian Danielson and now Wheeler Yuta of the Blackpool Combat Club slipping in and uh, challenging uh, Starks to a matchup, just kind of prove his worth to him. So uh, this one to me feels like this is Starks to win. Uh, you know, he's going to get his heat back. He's going to get his momentum back after beating Yuta. It's going to be a good match, but this is another one for Starks to shine and show more of what he's capable of. I think this is the last few months especially have been really strong work by Ricky. Four-way tag match for a future shot at the AEW tag titles. You have the Guns, the Lucha Brothers, the Young Bucks, and Orange Cassidy and Hook. And uh, short and sweet, I'm going to give my prediction and my pick to Orange and Hook in this one. The reason I say that is because, spoiler alert, I'm predicting the, uh, that FTR will retain against Aussie Open. And of all those different matchups, we've all seen those before except for Orange and Hook. And I think just for the sheer originality of it, because we've seen FTR and the Bucks enough times now, and FTR and the Lucha Brothers and FTR and the Guns, they had their feud there. And uh, yeah, having something different and exciting, a nice bounce back for Orange Cassidy after losing uh, the international championship. The, that one that feels like a good pick for me. Chris Statlander defends the TBS championship against the House of Black's Julia Hart. She's not been beaten since April of last year, and that loss came at the hands of Chris Statlander. So real potential full circle moment here if Julia were to win and uh, become the new champion. I love Julia Hart's presentation in the House of Black. I think she's been pretty, protected pretty well and booked pretty strong, all told. I think that, uh, though, it's ultimately, I think Chris is going to retain the championship here. I, th I still think it's very firmly hers, and I think especially her last several matches since winning it, I think have really proven that. And speaking of the TBS championship, I know that the big news this past week was Jade Cargill, former TBS champion, recently being signed for WWE, and uh, it's created a lot of controversy, it seems. A lot of talk, certainly. I think it's uh, great for Jade. The fact she came into AEW with essentially a blank slate and was given this really strong push, whether people agree with that push happening or not, she's been portrayed as this really the big star. I think she has filled those shoes pretty well. I mean, obviously, there's still a lot to learn. She's not, you know, A plus perfect in the ring yet, but she's grown so much since her debut. I think she really carries herself well. I think she's got a great uh, physique and a look that's going to get people's attention uh, on this broader stage of WWE. I am not going to speculate where she's going to end up, whether it's the developmental like NXT or she's going to jump right to the main roster. You know, it's it's a really tough to call, but um, I think either place she's going to be, uh, I think she'll be presented really well. I think they're clearly, the way they're kind of promoting it is a, it's a big deal. It's a really big signing. And I think that if WWE puts their effort in 
into it uh, with building, you know, as much as as much in the Jade as AEW did uh, relatively, then sky's the limit, I think, for Cargill. I'm never going to begrudge a wrestler from going from one company to the next because it's a business. They're all independent contractors. They got to, you know, make their money. And I get that. And it's uh, it seems like Jade left AEW on perfectly good terms and doesn't seem like there's much controversy outside of that. But obviously there's people on the Internet who want to make something out of it. And uh, I guess we can have them let them do that, I guess. But it's really cool to see Jade getting this chance. And uh, it's also you know, a win for AEW as well, that they are producing people that, you know, WWE want to take. Kanosuke Takeshita, Will Ospreay, and Sammy Guevara team up to take on Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega, and Kota Ibushi. This comes after Sammy uh, officially turned heel on Jericho, hitting him in the balls after their match at Arthur Ashe. Uh, very similar to what happened with Jericho and Shawn Michaels 20 years earlier at WrestleMania. 19. You know, the trunks that Sammy was wearing at Arthur Ashe, dead giveaway. I'm not sure if long term Sammy Guevara needs to stay in the Don Callis family, but I think, you know, people like booing Sammy Guevara. I think that him being a babyface wasn't a great fit for him. Uh, and so for him to be back being a heel, it makes sense. His promo against uh, Jericho last this past week on Dynamite explaining everything from a kayfabe standpoint makes total sense. It all checks out. So I think Sammy being officially broken off from Jericho is only going to be great for him in the long term. As far as who I think is going to win this one, my pick is the Don Callis family. I think they're going to keep their momentum of heat and boovations going in this one, and it's going to further solidify Sammy Guevara's heel turn. So, yeah, I think that there will be some miscommunications with the babyface team. Like, because Jericho and, you know, Jericho and Omega may still not get along. There will be some miscommunications, and that will probably allow for the Don Callis family to stand up victorious. Christian Cage versus Darby Allen, two out of three falls match for the TNT Championship. First of all, I'm just going to say that the interview segment, the sit down with Jim Ross between the two of them on Dynamite was one of the highlights of that show. In an episode that was very promo heavy because they had a lot to get across for the Wrestle Dream and as far as the go home show, that was one of the strongest go home segments I've seen in a while. I think that uh, Jericho and Darby had good interactions and good good, good dialogue in this one and uh, the moment where Darby wipes the face paint off to try and prove a point was interesting. I th also think it's interesting that he's explicitly saying he's going to keep Nick Wayne from being at ringside in this one, which if they go through with that is pretty cruel because that's Nick Wayne's hometown, be kind of mean. But uh, I think that's going to come back to bite him in the story. I think that, you know, I'm, I'm predicting a moment where Luchasaurus will bring out Nick Wayne and like hold him hostage or something and he's like beat up and bloody. And that's going to cost Darby again, uh, you know, uh, and uh, a Christian will ultimately win the two out of three falls and retain the title. Um, again, playing more into that story, of Nick Wayne being this liability for Darby. And, you know, Darby kind of telegraphed it uh, in that interview segment where he said, I've won this championship in Seattle before. I'll do it again. No, you won't. You just jinxed it. So I think that that's how it's going to go down is that Nick Wayne will once again kind of be Darby's undoing here and further kind of maybe drive a wedge or further conflict him now being in this kind of mentor position. Eddie Kingston will defend both his ROH and his New Japan Strong Open Weight Championship against Katsuyori Shibata. Of all the matches on Sunday's card, I think this is the one that me and my circle of friends are the most excited for. Uh, I'm really just excited for Eddie Kingston's kind of rise to prominence now, finally getting his due, beating Claudio and Arthur Ashe, and getting that great moment of finally, you know, winning the championship for New Japan strong, and then having that one, that win against Claudio to follow up. What a great moment. What a great ride Kingston's on. When you consider that back in 2020, he was like one, you know, one or two days away, essentially, from quitting the business entirely uh, due to being financially strapped. And, and God knows, you know, how, what would have happened after that. So for him to have this moment here, you got to love it. And I believe he is going to win this match up here. Just keep that reign going. Seeing, you know, Shibata with three belts, you know, might be nice to some people to think about, but I think it's just too much. So I think that Kingston's going to win this one. MJF will defend the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles by himself against Vincent and Dutch of the Righteous. This comes after Adam Cole got injured jumping off the ramp at Arthur Ashe, uh, hurting his ankle evidently. And uh, so now MJF, though, is trying to be tough and be a team player and uh, defend the belts all by himself and just try to really to impress his good friend Adam Cole. And based on what we saw on Dynamite and how that show ended, I think we're kind of, the, the, the pieces are 
are starting to come into place as to where this is possibly going. It seems to me that perhaps the stuff with Roderick Strong and the Kingdom and Adam Cole, it's all this big kind of like far-reaching conspiracy to ultimately cost MJF. That's kind of like the, the vision that all I can see right now is that. And I might be wrong, but I mean, I think it's another great way to kind of build up MJF as a baby face. He's being very valiant, but he's putting himself in all these positions where he's getting beat up more and more. And it just seems like it's the opportunity is there is all I'm saying. But then it gets really tricky because if MJF loses this matchup, you got to do it in a way where he is you know, sympathetic, where he's protected because he's still the top guy in AEW. And of course, I'm sure that is tied in to what's going on with the storyline right now. I think that um, the possibility is there for MJF to like solo, you know, know, uh, come up from behind and and, and beat and defend uh, the belts against the righteous. That I see as a possibility. But to me, it seems more likely that uh, we'll see the titles change hands here. Um, taking the belts off of Adam Cole and MJF, especially if Cole is injured, obviously, seems like the right call. And you can kind of have those belts go back amongst the rest of the main Ring of Honor roster and not have it kind of tied up in this main event angle. And so uh, my prediction here is that uh, ultimately Vince and, and Dutch will win. AEW tag title match. You got FTR defending against Aussie Open. I think it's going to be a great matchup, but like I kind of indicated earlier in this predictions video, I think FTR is going to retain. It's going to be a great match, and they're going to retain. Oh, there you have it. Finally, what I'm guessing is going to be the main event, you're going to have the hometown hero or the home state hero, Brian Danielson, going against Zack Sabre Jr. The dream match that Danielson has always wanted, especially now that he says he's in the twilight of his career. And of course, they were going to have that match last year at Forbidden Door, but Danielson's injury at the time prevented that from happening. So I think there's a lot uh, at stake in this matchup as far as just the kind of the hype behind it. I think it's going to be a fantastic matchup. It's hard to find a bad match but for either of those those guys and this seems like the kind of match these two have been like dreaming of for a while and you just know it's going to be one of those matches that's going to be kind of hard to forget it's going to be uh i'm really excited about this one it's going to be this and kingston shibata for me as the two that i'm looking forward to the most especially just for that local reaction the washington state reaction to danielson is going to be absolutely insane and so i'm just really i'm here for the vibes honestly but i think danielson is going to win well those are my predictions for wrestle dream folks what do you think is going to happen on sunday let me me know in the comment section below. Now, as far as the review is concerned, we are coming back from Seattle on like Monday. So the review is going to come out probably Tuesday or Wednesday. It's going to be more of an informal review, similar to what I did for WrestleMania this year, where I'm not going to be given star ratings or anything like that. Just kind of giving you my overall impressions of those matches. But we are, yeah, very much looking forward to being in Seattle. Once again, if you are there and you see me, Please feel free to say hello. Don't be shy. I promise you, I will not bite. Let me know what you think is going to happen at Wrestle Dream in the comment section below, folks. I'm Brian Zane, and I'll see you next time.